Before you go anywhere, it is only going to take me one minute of your time to explain to you why I believe the Chicago Bulls need to start the rebuild. I think it starts with the big three overall at first. This Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, Nikola Vucevic experiment, I just think has ran its course and it needs to come to an end. Personally, those three, they don't get it done defensively on the defensive side of the floor. I just don't think they're the best leaders. And I think truly in the modern day NBA, and just honestly, frankly, it throughout NBA history, you start with your three best players, your two best players. They are the ones that set the tone. And I just think overall, the Levine, DeRozan, Vooch experiments, it has ran its course in Chicago. And frankly, I think it is completely time for the Bulls to completely rebuild during the NBA offseason, I just think it's time to move on. Levine, DeRozan, Vooch, the time is over in Chicago, and that's what we're going to be talking about on today's edition of the Bulls Report by Chat Sports. So on today's show, we're going to be looking at what a perfect Chicago Bulls rebuild will like. I got four steps for you guys. I'm going to be going through them one by one and diving into each and every one of them. I'll be explaining my thoughts on all that and more. It's going to be a fun video. This is going to be a lot of uh, fun trades I'm going to make. So kind of uh, take them with a grain of salt. Most of these are probably unlikely, but we're going to have fun with it. Anyway, so we're going to look at what a perfect Bulls rebuild could look like. But guys, help us reach 2,000 subscribers here on the channel. Only need 207 more people to hit that subscribe button. And I know there are 207 of you guys out there who have not yet hit that subscribe button. So if you want to become a more informed Chicago Bulls fan, just go hit that subscribe button right down there. Let's take a look at the Bulls roster situation right now before we kind of dive on into this. So right now, Io DeSumo, if you start with the restricted free agents on the roster, it starts with Io DeSumo, and then the uh, free agents are Nikola Vucevic and Kobe White. Those two guys, I do expect the Bulls to maybe bring back. I got some thoughts on Kobe White here at the later half of today's video, but Io, I expect the Bulls to bring him back. But then it really dives into like the big three I was mentioning at the top. The Bulls are probably going to need to move on from those big three. It's just going to have to, they, you know, they have the most trade value on the Bulls, and I do think it's time for the Bulls to just kind of rip that band-aid off. So the number one step in my plan is for the Bulls to trade Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan, and actually I got them going in the same exact trade package yes you know i had to do it the bulls are going up there and getting that number three overall pick in the 2023 nba draft this would be my if there's one move i could have the bulls do this offseason it would be go get that number three overall pick the trade i cooked up with was anthony simons and nurkic and that third overall pick for demar derozan zach Levine, and dalen terry do i think the trailblazers take this maybe you know who really knows what direction they really want to kind of head this franchise in and I don't even know if they think they can win a championship with Dame, Levine, and DeRozan and maybe Jeremy Grant they re-signed him but this was a trade package I had for my perfect Bulls offseason plan and with that number three pick I got the Bulls taking Scoot Henderson and this would start the Scoot Henderson hype train I am a massive fan of Scoot Henderson. If you just look at his body, he is a grown-ass man at the young age of 19 years old. He is an absolute dog. He's an athletic freak. And frankly, if this was any other NBA draft, he would probably be going number one overall if it wasn't for Victor Wembenyama. But what he did with the G League at night last season, pretty solid. I mean, 16.5 points per game, 5.4 rebounds, 6.5 assists. 43% from the field. Yes, that three-point uh, shooting percentage is low at 27.5, but he was only taking three three-pointers a game. So I do kind of like the self-awareness he had there the, where he's not going to just sit out there and start chucking. He's going to do what he does well, and that's get downhill and get to the lane. But overall, I think he's a, honestly a hybrid of Derrick Rose and Russell Westbrook. Like, I think his body type is more similar to Russ's body type. But I think the way he plays is extremely similar to D. Rose. Like, D. Rose, obviously, you know, you think of D. Rose, you think of that burst. You think of that athleticism. You think of the explosiveness. And a guy like uh, Scoot Henderson plays very similar to D. Rose. Except, honestly... I would probably say Scoot is a lot more physical when he's attacking the rim. Obviously, D. Rose wasn't shying away from anybody. We all know that. But Scoot Henderson, in terms of getting his shoulder in the people, like he is absolutely fantastic at that. So, Scoot, that would be my number one dream kind of pickup for the Bulls this offseason. Would somehow trade up the number three and go and nabbing Scoot Henderson. Second on my plan would be a little sign and trade for Nikola Vucevic. 
uh, Joe Crowley out of the Sun Times for uh, or for the Chicago Sun Times. He reported that the Bulls are working on a three-year deal right now to re-sign Nikola Vucevic. I know a lot of Bulls fans were panicking, saying like, "No, no, no, no. don't, don't, don't even think about bringing back Vooch." And my perfect uh, Bulls kind of rebuild here. I have them sign and trading him to the Dallas Mavericks for the tenth overall pick and Tim Hardaway to kind of help the contracts match out. Obviously, we don't know what Nikola Vucevic's contract's going to be. But I'm assuming this would maybe get it done for the Mavs here. I really would wonder if you offered this to the Mavs, what they would say. Because they want to win now. I mean, they got Luka, Kyrie. You go add them a solid big and Vooch and get them a solid 3 and D guy like Caruso. And then the Bulls get the 10th overall pick. And you go out and you draft my man out of UConn, Jordan Hawkins. This is would be my ideal situation for the Bulls. If they could somehow... We're looking back at this, and we say, we got Scoot Henderson and Jordan. I'm laughing because it, like, it honestly seems so unlikely, but I would love it so much. Scoot and Jordan Hawkins, it would be fantastic. But Jordan Hawkins last year winning the national championship for the UConn Huskies, he was fantastic. I watched a lot of Big East ball last year, and every time I watched UConn play, you just felt like this kid could go get 30 on any given night. 16.2 points per game. 3.8 rebounds, 40% from the field, but that three-point percentage, that highlights his game, 38.8% from deep this past season. He's an absolute flamethrower, and I'm not just saying this. I really believe he could be the next Ray Allen from UConn. Like, Ray Allen and Jordan Hawkins, they got pretty similar jump shots. It's one flew in motion, but Jordan Hawkins, he elevates on his jumper. He, the shot's at a high access point, and he is going to be special in the NBA and honestly it would help out a huge need for the Chicago Bulls shooting the Bulls don't really have any true catch and shoot guys on this team this is the best one in this year's draft Jordan Hawkins if you could have a backcourt to build around of Scoot and Hawkins for the upcoming future I mean I think that would be special and I think you could win a lot of games down the road with those two guys you know kind of manning your backcourt but number three for me let Patrick Williams cook I have actually kind of changed my tune on Patrick Williams uh, I went back and I've been watching a lot of just his individual games, like not just his highlights, like watching like his misses and just kind of the shot attempts he took this past season. I am a huge fan of him. I mean, the efficiency is there. Like for a guy who came in the league and we all questioned his ability to shoot the ball, the fact that he's worked on it this much so far in his NBA career to get, to get it to a point where he is shooting 41.5% from deep already in his NBA career. I just think it's I just think it's special and it kind of speaks to the work ethic he has. But I do think for him to develop, he's going to need more shots. If we're talking about the pecking order of shots this past year from the Bulls, started with Levine, went to Rosen, then it went Vooch, and then it was Patrick Williams, Kobe White. They were kind of around fourth in uh, shot attempts. But I do think if he wants to get it up to 15 points per game, I just think it takes shots. I just think it takes more volume from him. And I will say the one question with this is like if the volume increases, will the efficiency stay the same? Normally we see that's where kind of good or where players kind of take that leap from being a role player to maybe being an all-star is uh, kind of that shooting efficiency splits and everything. So I do think Patrick Williams, he just needs more shots. But on the defensive side of the floor, he's an elite defender. He can guard one through four fairly easily in the NBA. And I do think he is a playoff defender as well. Like I can imagine now it's the 2024 NBA playoffs and Patrick Williams is sitting in that chair causing havoc. He's super long. I'm just have always been a huge fan of Patrick Williams, and I honestly think he's going to be a heck of a heck of a basketball player in the NBA. But number four for me is uh, don't bring back Kobe White. Right now, he is a restricted free agent. The Bulls do have that option. I just think it's time to move on. Um, you know, Kobe White, I was a big fan of him coming out of North Carolina, but you know, this past season he was all right. Uh, he was pretty inefficient at times. Obviously, you know, 37% from three is you know not too bad. 44% from the field is solid as well, but I just felt like Kobe White, and maybe it could be the same reason for, you know, Patrick Williams that maybe he just needed more shots, but I just didn't really feel like he contributed to winning at the highest level for the Chicago Bulls. Like, I, I've always thought Kobe White could maybe develop into a Tyrese Maxey type of build, like Emmanuel quickly, like a six-man guard off the bench. We just really haven't seen that leap. You know, he's working out with Chris Paul this offseason, so maybe that could help his game. But honestly, I want the Bulls to roll with Io DeSumo as kind of their backup point guard or potentially their starting point guard. Because frankly, I just like my point guards from Chicago. Like, I think Io, if he needs any motivation to work hard in the offseason, is just like, I'm playing for my hometown team. I'm playing for the team I grew up loving. And I just like my point guards from Chicago. I just think there's a certain type of swagger Chicago guards have, you know, on the defensive side of the floor, just the way they play. I just think it's a totally different type of game. And I mean, you guys all know that. 
to be true as well. But his first two seasons for Io, obviously the first year, incredibly efficient. Like for a second round pick to step into the NBA and average nine points a game on 52% from the field and 37.6% from deep, it's incredible. But we did see that number decline in year two. I mean, going from 37.6 to 31.2, something happened there. He just wasn't uh, he just wasn't as efficient as he was. But I do think with what he brings defensively and just uh, he's got a more complete game than most would think. Uh, I'm just a fan of Io, and I think he could be a hell of a backup point guard and maybe even a starting point guard one day in the NBA. Obviously, he needs to work on his skills a little bit, but he has the um, kind of just the measurables and the intangibles to be a good guard in the NBA. But I'll throw this question to your guys as well. Bulls got a Bulls got a lot of decisions to make this offseason. Do you want the Bulls to try and rebuild, or do you want them to try to contend? Give me an R for rebuild or a C for contend. I'll probably make this a pin comment on today's video because I'm really just curious to see what direction you guys want the Bulls to go in. I'm in the rebuild camp. I just think, you know, rip that bandit off. I think it's time to move on. I just don't, don't think the big three can really get it done anymore. But, guys, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. This is what a perfect rebuild would look like. Obviously, I'm not saying, you know, the Trailblazers or Mavs would say yes to those trades, but it's my dream, my perfect, my ideal Bulls rebuild. So the Bulls get Scoot and Jordan Hawkins. I'm all in for it. Hit that subscribe button if you guys haven't already. See you guys next time. Go Bulls.